Good morning, guys. What is going on? We are out here on the family boat today. I got my mom, my dad, and Victor on the boat this morning. Good morning. And we're ready to catch dolphins. It's a little breezier out here than we thought it was going to be. But today we are going to try to catch some dolphins, some mahi. And we have a west wind, so the wind is blowing offshore. And so we may have to go out pretty far to find anything floating today, which is typically how we try to find these mahi. So we just found a line of seagrass. So we're gonna try to troll around this grass here. My dad called it hay. <laughs> it's not regular seaweed. It's just seagrass from like Miami and the Bay in Miami. And we're gonna troll these little guys. When this goes through the water, it creates a big bubble trail and it looks like a fling bait fish. So like Brooke said, we don't really see much out here. So instead of just running out there aimlessly, we're gonna troll and hopefully we pick up a dolphin along the way. So let's see how this trolling goes. Normally we may not stop on this kind of weed, but we did see some live bait under a big patch of it. So might as well give it a try. Ooh. Talk to us, Dan. Oh yeah. We got one, man. This is what we came out for. Brooke spotted this little um, rip and decided to troll this rip and we picked one up. Hopefully it's a keeper. So we're in about 800 feet. And like my dad said, we found this rip going north and south. And we've only been trolling it for a few minutes now. And like always, we just pulled out our public subs. <laughs> Nothing like a public sub for breakfast. And didn't even take a bite of it yet. And bam, fish on. That's what you need, a public sub to have good luck on the boat. So first dolphin coming to the boat. Yeah. Yes. Should I net it or gaff it? Net it. It's ready. It's ready. Oh, yeah, it's jumped right in the net. Ah! Easy, bro. Okay, bro. Oh my gosh. Things are getting chaotic out here. So we usually net smaller dolphin like this. It gets them in the boat nice and easy. And dolphins have to be 20 inches to the fork. He'll probably go like 22, but you obviously never want to gaff a fish if it's going to be too small. And this fish is pretty small. You don't want to put a gaff hole in them if you don't need to. Let's throw them on the tape just to see. Yeah, 25. There you go, Dad. Yeah, first dolphin. Good first, eating. First dolphin of the day. This is what we came out here for. Let's get this baby in the cooler. Look at that gorgeous fish. Love the colors of these guys. Let's pick up our speed again and get lines back out. Well, it's probably been about two hours since that first fish that we caught. And basically all we've been doing is running and gunning and then stopping and trolling when we find more patches of seaweed. The main thing you wanna look for when you're mahi fishing is stuff floating because stuff floating attracts bait underneath the floating debris or whatever it is. And then the mahi come and feed on the stuff that's under the seaweed or you could find a tree or a log or just like a floating piece of trash and we have not found one piece of trash today only this seaweed that's not even real good seaweed so i think it's called turtle grass is what it's called turtle grass, turtle grass. yeah it's, it doesn't really support life like the sargasm usually we look for the really thick bumpy sargasm weed and that'll hold a lot of bait like blue runners and baby bait fish and trigger fish and blue runners and all sorts of stuff but this stuff is just desolate and it doesn't help when you have a west wind and you're offshore fishing everything is getting blown further and further away from shore so there might have been stuff here but the wind carried it away from us so it is a game of just looking across the horizon just praying you see something floating and it's funny because your mind like plays tricks on you and you're like, oh, I see something. And you're like, oh, no, I didn't see something. You're like, oh, I see something. Nope, didn't see something. So fingers crossed that we find something floating here that uh, has some mahi on it. It's easier to see things floating when I'm standing on the guttle up here. I see something white ahead of us. Let's see what it is. The top of a bucket, maybe? Well, 
something like this is what I've been looking for all day long. And I almost ran it over. That's how close we got to it. So we were casting little bucktail jigs and Victor threw on a piece of squid. And I kind of like ran right up on this big piece of bamboo. So we could have scared whatever was hanging around it, but it has a lot of growth on it. And this is what you want to find because there's some baits on it and growth and hopefully the mahi are around. I can't believe we almost ran it over. Sometimes when it's so close, you're looking to your left, you're looking to your right, but yep. you're usually not looking like right under the boat. And it was pretty much right under the boat. I think we should troll um, past it a few times. Oh, you. Give it to mom, give it to mom. Yeah, sure. Wow, that was incredible. You got one too, Vic? No. Woohoo! Go mom! Oh yeah. Wait, you're was, on? Well, he was attacking it as I was reeling. Well, I was like, let's troll by this stick. We trolled this lure for 30 seconds. Bam, mahi on, baby. Mom, you said you haven't caught a fish in a long time, huh? Nope, since that big uh, mutton snapper. How's it feel? It feels good. Looks like it's gonna be another keeper. Yep. Just watch where your swivel is. Reel a little bit more. He's going a little crazy, so we're gonna subdue him and put him in the cooler, but it's amazing how nothing wanted to eat the jig or the squid, and as soon as we started trolling. Did you get a hit? There's our log. Yes, I did. I'm gonna troll past it again. So plan is to just keep doing like figure eights around this thing, and as we catch a fish like we just did, make sure you keep an eye on where it is so you don't lose it. As we wait for our next fish, I'm going to tell you guys about today's video sponsor, which is Element. Element is an electrolyte drink mix with everything you need and nothing that you don't. They come in these extremely convenient little packets, so it's perfect to bring on the boat or anywhere you go. I'm gonna mix up this grapefruit one right now. Element can help prevent and eliminate headaches, muscle cramps, fatigue, and other common symptoms of electrolyte deficiency without all the added junk. That means no sugar, no coloring, no artificial ingredients, no gluten, and no fillers. I have implemented Element into my life for the last two years and I absolutely love it. So whether I'm out on the boat all day fishing, diving, surfing, or just doing yard work, I can always count on Element to help me feel my best. So if you guys are interested in trying out Element, right now they're offering you a free sample pack with any purchase. That is eight single serving packets. It's a perfect way to try all of their flavors. If you're interested, go to drinkelement.com slash Brooke Chris, or I will have a link in the video description. Now let's get back to fishing. Cheers. This is all dried up, ain't it? Look what I just caught. It's a crock. <laughs> it was floating on the surface. It's going to be a first for everything. It's a Pikachu. <laughs> Pretty cool balloon. You want to catch him on? Wow, good job. There he is. There he is. Okay, add it to our trash collection with our crock. You have no idea how many balloons you find when you spend a day offshore fishing. When you guys let them go in the air, they eventually make it someplace, and a lot of times they end up in the ocean, just floating in the ocean. And yeah, so don't let your balloons go. No, I said you came out to measure your fish to see if it's bigger than mine. No, I seen it in the boat. I already know it's bigger. Oh, you already <laughs> know it's bigger. Well, let's let's prove it. Dad's was 25 to the fork. This got small. Dang on there. I've just got records to maintain. I'm telling you. Oh man, look at that. 26 and a half. Yep, she got me. I'm gonna fillet yours, Deb. <laughs> All right guys, well we are back home at the dock. We got Vic cleaning up the boat in the back and my dad is going to fillet the fish because the last time he did this in a video, you guys seemed to really enjoy it. And you said more Brian filleting fish. So that's what we got. He's gonna fillet some fish. Yep, it's like a flash from the past. This used to be my job until 
until YouTube needed um, all these catch fillet and and cooks. Now I just catch and, and, and sit back and enjoy the cooks um, while I'm filleting this dolphin. I'm gonna tell you all day long and I'm not kidding all day long while I was fishing I couldn't stop thinking about the dinner that Victor cooked us all last night you'll probably see that video before this one um, where they caught dolphin in Mexico he brought some back he cooked that dolphin so amazing that I, I thought about it all day today and I was thinking I wonder if Brooke would do that same recipe. <laughs> it was so good. Wow, looking good. I grew up in this house and we used to fish in this canal like every single day. We would fish here all the time. And when we were first growing up catching fish, we would catch something and be like, Dad, can we eat this? Can we eat this? And he would cook us any fish that we caught because we just wanted to try everything. So it's funny because Victor's biggest thing is like no trash fish, just trash cooks. And we would eat everything out of this out of this canal. It didn't matter what it was. We would eat it if it was a mullet or a jack or even like all the snapper and everything that we would catch. We'd enjoy everything that we would catch here. And we're still doing it. Yep. We're still doing it. We don't put our nose up to... To fresh fish don't like to waste anything those resources that nature provides I, I never liked hearing stories where people you know waste it I enjoy cleaning it and eating it just as much as catching it I know that you um, watch every single YouTube video do you skip through the cleaning parts of videos <laughs> Are you talking to me, bro? <laughs> huh? I am. I, uh, I watch every single one of Brooke and Victor's videos. And um, I even read all their comments, both Brooke and Victor's. I will even go back to old videos and, and press the button where you can see the, the most recent comments. Because I enjoy the, uh, reading comments. So... I watch every video, I read every comment, but I do skip through the fillets. I, I've seen so many fish filleted. I just, that's the only part, but I don't like skip through it. I just, when it gets to fillet time, I scroll down and read comments. Mm. So the video's playing. I don't know, uh, I don't skip anything, but that's when I read the comments. Well, I'm a little out of practice, I must say. And um, it's, it's not really true. I do watch some of Brooke and Victor's filleting. And I know I don't compare with that. That is great. It's, uh, it's okay. It's not as perfect as, as the ones they do. So tell but, us about what you're doing. Oh, I always like to pop the eyes. You should always do that before you throw your fish in. Because if you don't, the gases in the stomach will expand and then the fish will float and when it floats it rots and then nothing gets to eat it so if you throw the gut oh wow victor what? is this your squid i don't think so or remember you tried to, oh yeah you, you threw a squid out for bait that looks about the same size this was the one that we caught off the log so Victor, Victor, um, what'd you do? Mishooked that thing and then cast yeah, it off? Cast it off by accident. He he mishooked it and cast it off. And I tried to watch it as long as I could to see if a, a dolphin would would eat that free free squid. And oh my gosh, did you hear that? Yeah. But anyways, I always like looking in the stomachs, like. I don't know, that looks like maybe a flying fish or yeah, something. Yeah, maybe. I, I don't know what that is, but I always, it seems kind of weird, but I like looking in the stomachs. And you pull that stuff out, and, and the fish are just teeming over here after it. So, 
pop the eyes and throw the guts in. It takes an extra minute. It's fun to see what's in the stomach. Then this thing sinks and what doesn't get chewed apart, maybe gets eaten by a nurse shark or jacks or crabs, but at least it doesn't float to the surface. Oh my gosh, it's like piranhas in there. Look, look. So that filet doesn't look too bad. Look at it. No, you did a great job. Yeah. We won't um, we won't squirt it with fresh water. Um, it's it's never never good to it's the worst thing you can do. You squirt it and all of a sudden you're like, what have I done to the meat? The meat turns color, it looks it just doesn't look as pretty. So we never never squirt that with fresh weight fresh water. Just keep your hands clean, your knife clean, your table clean. And then just leave um, leave the salt water on the on the meat. Okay. Wow! Look at that. There's the whole skin. You see it, Vic? He did great. Great job. Watch this. <laughs> Something that's crazy is these catfish in these crazy quantities never existed back here. We used to fish with finger mullet late at night. We would sit here and put rods out with bobbers and just wait to try to catch something on bobbers. And we caught a catfish like one time. Do you remember that? And it was like the craziest thing ever to catch a catfish. And now there's hundreds of them. But when I was growing up, there were no catfish like this. I remember we caught one catfish ever and it was like, oh my God, a catfish. I can't believe we caught a catfish. But now it's almost impossible to not catch catfish. Well guys, my dad could have been inside enjoying the nice AC, but instead he filleted a fish for you. So make sure you comment down below and let him know how he did so that he will do this more often because he's gonna read all the comments. <laughs> do you want to do the other one or you want me to? That's up to you if you want to do another one. Um, I don't mind, okay, that was kind of fun. You can do it. Another beautiful fillet. We're gonna finish up cleaning these fish and then I will see you guys in the kitchen to cook them up. Hey guys, welcome back to the kitchen. So we have our mahi all prepared and this tray is from the fishing trip that you guys watched. And then Victor and I, I think we had mentioned this earlier in the video, we had just gotten home from Mexico and this is actually a giant bowl of mahi that we took home from Mexico that the pieces were so thick that we um, sliced them in half to make them about the same thickness as the other fish so that they cook at the same time. But um, it's kind of crazy looking at the difference of the two colors of these fish. This one's been frozen, this one hasn't. But yeah, that's kind of crazy. It'll be interesting to see if they taste different. So what we're going to do is a miso glaze on top of our mahi, so let's get going with that. So in here we have some lime zest, garlic, and ginger. And then this is miso paste. So we're gonna go in with about that much. If you've never used this before, it's extremely salty, so I'm not going to be adding any additional salt to this. Then we're gonna go in with some Duke's mayonnaise. Then some sesame oil. And lime juice. And mix that all up. I tasted it, it's delicious, but I did just add a little bit of honey to it as well. So here is what it looks like. Before we put this on our fish, let's do some dry seasoning. Going in with some fresh cracked pepper. Next, garlic powder. Next, time to put on our miso mayo mixture. All right, going in. And we have the oven set at 400 degrees. For the last couple minutes, I'm broiling the fish right now so to get a nice brown, crispy little top on them. And then we're gonna have some broccoli as well as some mashed sweet potatoes. Trying to really get in the fall vibes here. Have some sweet potato. Let's do a little peek on our fish. Ooh, baby, looking good. Looking good. All right, here we go. 
got some sweet potato. We're gonna give everyone a piece from both trays. Just to see if we can tell a difference. Here we go. Our mahi with a miso mayo, mashed sweet potatoes, and broccoli. All right, you guys. Start coming. That first plate has my mom's name on it because she Here caught the biggest fish. So she gets the first plate. Ooh, looks beautiful. She always gets the biggest beautiful fish. Beautiful like you. So, one fish is from Mexico, one fish is from here. Which is which? Um, that piece is from here, and that's from Mexico. Oh, okay. Somebody take it. <laughs> um, I thought everything paired together really well, like the flavor, for, the flavor profiles. Miso, lime juice, ginger, garlic, the... The marinade on the fish was just so flavorful. And my piece of mahi, that first bite I went into it, just all this moisture came out. It was just <laughs> such a juicy fish. Um, but yeah, no, it was a killer meal. I really loved it. I think we ate every single piece of fish, broccoli, and sweet potato that Brooke cooked tonight. Thank you. Uh, I agree with Victor. Um, you married the flavors perfectly together. Uh, they all complement each other. Uh, I'm just jealous I didn't get to go out there and help catch them. Well, I did go out and catch them, and um, even though we only caught two, it was uh, a great meal we had with them. Um, I had a great day on the ocean with Brooke and Vic and Brian, um, and a great meal here with the whole family. Thanks for uh, inviting us to fish and then cooking for us. It was delicious. Especially love the sweet potatoes. It's fall and it was just a perfect meal. Thank you. Mm. Yeah. Okay, what everybody said about the dinner, um, it, it was it was beautiful and tasty. But I want to second what Deb said. Um, we we only caught two dolphin. We fished for seven hours. Some people might consider that a slow day, but it didn't matter. I was with Deb and. Brooke and Victor, and the ocean changed its personality three or four times during the day, from flat to two to three foot rollers. We wound up being out, you know, more than 10 miles out, and uh, the swells were like six to seven with an occasional 10 in our little 24 footer, but they were just nice, comfortable rollers. It was a cool, gorgeous day. And to see Deb smile, you know, catching the biggest dolphin of the day, and just hanging out with Brooke and Victor. Um, I'm, I'm just so happy that I, I got to be there. Wow, thanks so much. Mm -hmm. That was nice. <laughs> well, don't have anything to say quite as good as that, but <laughs> I could definitely back up everyone on how good the, the food was tonight, so. Thank you, Brooke, for the invite, and uh, everyone watching, you should try this recipe because it was uh, it was good. And try it while it's still fall. Thank you, Gabby. Well, everyone um, said everything I wanted to say, <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, like the flavors meshed really well together, and the sweet potato was incredible. Um, I really liked everything about this dish. Thank you. We did definitely put our time in on this day of fishing. You know, sometimes you go out there and you catch a bunch of fish, and some days you go out there and you only catch two, but you know, you can still feed the whole family. Um, everyone did notice a difference between those two fish. The bigger mahi from Mexico was definitely more firm than the smaller fish, which was very interesting. I don't know if it was because it was a bigger fish or if it was because it had already been frozen, but they tasted the same, just a different texture. So I thought that was um, interesting to let you guys know. But um, if you guys are interested in trying out Element, make sure you check the link in the description. 
Um, big thank you to them for sponsoring this video. As always, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed, and I will see you in the next video. Say Pikachu, I love you. Ha, 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 ha.